Come here now, girl. Hi, Bonbon bon here. While City Skylines 2 is very similar in many respects to its predecessor, there's a whole bunch of both minor and major changes to both learn and absorb. Today I'll walk you through the road tools, empowering you to start your first bustling city. In my next tutorial, I'll give you the tips and tricks to get these tools to work even better for you, so make sure that you're subscribed and have hit the notification bell. Note that at the time of recording, the game is less than a week old, and so between now and your time in the future, there may be multiple patches, upgrades and DLCs, not to mention any mods that you might be running. And so your game might look and run differently from mine. In addition, I am currently at milestone 10, and so a number of the options which are unavailable from the start have been unlocked, but I'll notify you if and when this is relevant. Finally, I'm playing and recording on PC, so if you're on console, you'll need to replace terms such as left click with whichever controller button you need to use. Right, so all that said, and straight after you've clicked the like button, let's dive straight into all things road tools. As with the original game, the road tools are available from the start, simply by clicking the road icon at the bottom in the taskbar. Across the top are now eight subcategory tabs. Small roads, medium roads, large roads, highways, intersections, roundabouts, parking spaces, and road services. When starting from a new game, many of these will be greyed out, needing to be unlocked using development points. But don't worry, you will have more than sufficient options to get your city started. Small roads are anything from one to three lanes, including one-way and asymmetrical options. There's also two custom bridge models you can choose in addition to the standard elevated road. If you hover your cursor over any of the thumbnails, you'll get a brief description of the asset, along with the cost to place, the cost of upkeep, the amount of power it can carry through its cables, and whether or not it has water and sewage pipes making choosing the correct road much, much easier. On to medium roads, which have four to five lanes, with the same variant options as before, and two further custom bridges. Large roads are six to eight lanes, with two further bridges, three if you have the San Francisco set. Highways include three variations of national roads, including everything from one to five lanes in single carriageways, and two more bridges in various configurations. There are now 10 base game intersections, all far superior to the original game's ploppable ones, but we'll talk more about how to best use these in a future tutorial. Roundabouts come in four different sizes, though you'll only have the very smallest one to start. Parking spaces provide four different sized surface lots, along with multi-storey, underground and automated parking options. And finally, road services, which provides the road maintenance depot, along with traffic controls, such as the placing or removing of crosswalks and traffic lights, street signs to direct or stop traffic, and road margin options such as wide pavements, tree-lined streets, and sound barriers. Now you know the inventory, let's look at how to place them. First, choose your preferred road from the menu. We'll be using the standard two-lane road. There are five different tool modes. Straight, curved, complex curve, continuous, and grid, along with a replace option. Let's take a look at each one in turn. For straight roads, click where you want to start, drag to where you want to stop, and then left click again. Curved roads, left click where you want to start, drag to a control point, left click, drag again to where you want to stop, and click again. This action will please many a geometry nerd, and if you're one of those, I bow to you. 
Complex curves are very similar, but include a second control point. Click to start, drag, click for a control point, drag, click the second control point, drag, and click to end. The second curve can bend in either direction, so it can be used to create subtle bends or snaking roads. Continuous is effectively the freehand option. Click to start, drag, click, drag, click, and so on. Easier to use than complex curves, but potentially less precise. Grids are very, very easy to use, but at the time of recording have a lack of fine-tuned controls. To place, click to select one corner. Drag and click to the width of the grid. And finally, drag and click to the depth of the grid. The game will set an optimum size for each block, though while absolutely buildable, will very much unlikely match the exact pattern that you had in mind. Note that in tests I've discovered that a block's width will generally be wider than its depth. So if you want your avenues to run in the opposite direction, drag and click the other axis first. But if you want the absolute perfect control over your grids, I'd use the straight road tool instead. Elevation. You can elevate and drop roads using the page up and page down buttons. The elevation step can be increased or decreased using the on-screen up and down arrows. In this case, the road will elevate or drop in multiples of 10 meters at a time, which is a lot. Clicking on the stacked bars icon rotates through the alternative elevation step settings, those being 5 meters, 2.5 meters, and 1.25 meters, before cycling back up to 10 meters again. Setting to a smaller elevation step will allow finer control of your ramps, bridges, and tunnels. Tunnels are achieved by simply dropping the elevation to below 12.5 meters. Until that point, your road will be in a cutting. On the opposite front, roads up to 7.5 meters of elevation will have a solid fill underneath, meaning the minimum height for a bridge crossing over another terrain-based network is 8.75 meters. Interestingly, it is possible to force a crossing over an elevated road at just another 6.25 meters, though it does require some wriggling. You can even bridge over buildings with the minimum of clearances, though buildings are measured at their highest point, so you can't skip over lower extensions. The maximum and minimum elevations are positive and negative 50 meters. That's as high and as deep as you can go. Parallel roads now come as standard. Select the type of road that you want, Set the offset, the space between the highways, click and drag using your tool of choice. Finally, in the tool suite, we have snapping. Snapping is a mechanic to set your networks into the exact position that you need. By default, all snapping is set to on, but you can toggle that to all off by clicking the asterisk. The individual options are to snap to existing geometry, that being directly onto the roads themselves. Snapping to zoning cell length builds the road in one cell increments. Snap to right angle makes creating perfectly square corners a cinch. Snapping to the side of a building works in tandem with now being able to plot buildings first and then connect roads to them. Snapping to guidelines takes away the guesswork of aligning roads which are away from the existing geometry. And snapping to zone grid makes finding the placement of roads between zone buildings much, much easier. Using all or a combination of these will help you to develop a much more professional looking network. The final button on this row isn't actually snapping, but it enables you to see the contour lines of the terrain helping you to plan realistic routes and even decide on whether bridges or tunnels should be called into action. Now, let's take a look at the road service options. 
the maintenance depot will spawn vehicles which will look after the quality of the roads which should help to keep the traffic flowing faster and shouldn't be overlooked in the long term. The next five buttons control intersection usage being traffic lights, stop signs, no left turn, no straight ahead and no right turn. You place these using the left click and remove using the right click. The final six buttons are road upgrades. Crosswalks are added and removed at nodes and intersections using the left and right click. Nodes are more difficult to force in the vanilla game than in City Skylines 1 and so getting an exact crosswalk placement might seem impossible. But my upcoming tips and tricks tutorial will help to navigate this. The next three buttons remove on-street parking by widening the pavements with either plain concrete, a grassy strip along the curb, or trees planted along the curb. The grass strip and trees can be combined, but these both come at a higher cost. The removal of on-street parking will force traffic to find specialist parking spaces. These options are added or removed from each side of the road in turn using the left and right click. The lighting button is intended to add street lights and associated power cables to roads which do not already have these. Finally, you can add and remove sound barriers from highways on either or both sides to help keep noise pollution to a minimum. Again though, it is early days and I find barriers to have at best a nominal effect. And that's it for today. My next tutorial will show you the basic techniques along with some early tips I've discovered to help your networks to shine. Until then, thanks for hitting the like button and a big shout out to the Bomb Bomb Buddies on Patreon and YouTube membership for supporting the channel. Without you, these videos simply wouldn't exist. Thanks for watching, I've been Bomb Bomb B and you've been very, very welcome.